Good evening, everyone, those who are here and also those who are joining online. We welcome you for our midweek prayer meeting. Even though it is a little bit uh, flurries and everything, some of you, you came here boldly and uh, to study God's word. We thank you. And uh, I hope so far all of you had a good week and uh, also uh, read the chapter 11, the gospel in Samaria. So I hope all of you went through the questions and uh, read the chapter. Before we discuss this chapter, let us have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for so far we, you have guided us the week. And as we are here at the church and also those who are watching online, be with us, let your Holy Spirit guide us and direct us, help us to read, understand, and to walk with thee. Bless us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So last chapter, chapter, what we, uh, last week, we went through the first Christian martyr, right? And uh, this chapter, it is uh, the gospel in Samaria. This chapter it covers, so it's a basically, it is a based on Acts chapter 8. So from that whole chapter, it covers uh, most of it. Act chapter 8, it covers, uh, it records the burial of Stephen, the beginning of as a Christian persecution, and the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people of Samaria and Ethiopia. So the whole chapter, it covers so many things. Uh, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 6, Paul said, it's a Paul said of his life before Jesus that he was so zealous in his religious faith that he persecuted the church. So Paul's supervision of the execution of Stephen was just one example of this persecution. Because Paul was what? He was consenting uh, to persecute Stephen, right? So it is uh, that chapter, if you read the first paragraph, it's uh, after the death of the Stephen, there arose against the believers in Jerusalem a persecution. Because of the persecution, they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. So Saul, it's a, he, he was persecuting like a havoc, right, of the church. You know, I was looking at it, what is a real kind of that uh, meaning, havoc? It's a, in ancient Greek word, it says it's a, it could occur an army destroying the city or a wild animal tearing at his meat. Imagine that, how Paul, he was persecuting the early Christian church. So he put a lot of people into the prison and uh, he went to every synagogue, right? Because the Jewish people, early church, as I said, looks like a lot of Jewish people, they had converted as a Christians. So that's why it is, they went to synagogue. And uh, he was exceedingly mad against them. So he was telling, I persecuted them even unto the strange cities. That Stephen was not the only one who suffered death may be seen in Saul's own words. So Saul, he was writing after he was converted. 
So he was telling them all these uh, incidents, what he did. And also it's, uh, in uh, Saul, it's, uh, he was telling, I am not worthy of the apostle. He was uh, writing in, uh, uh, later on, he was writing about this. So with that, let's go over our questions. It's uh, question number eight. Any volunteer to read question number eight? Yes, comment. At what point in time did Nicodemus publicly demonstrate his faith in Jesus? Um, at this time of peril, Nicodemus came forward in fearless avowal of his faith in the crucified Savior. Nicodemus was a member of the Sanhedrin uh, we other had been stared by the teaching of Jesus. As he had witnessed Christ in wonderful works, the conviction had fastened itself upon his mind that this was, that this was the saint of God. Too proud openly to acknowledge himself in sympathy with the Galilean teacher. He has saw a secret interview. In this interview, Jesus had unfolded to him the plan of salvation and his mission to this world. Yet still Nicodemus has hesitated. He hid the truth in his heart for three years. There was little apparent fruit. But while Nicodemus had not publicly acknowledged Christ, he had in the sad Edwin council repeatedly thwarted the schemes of the priest to destroy him. When at last Christ had been lifted on the cross, Nicodemus remembered the words that he had spoken to him in the night interview on the Mount of the Olives. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And he saw in Jesus the words Redeemer. Yes, thank you. And uh, uh, in addition to that, uh, in paragraph 105.1 also, they were mentioning it is a, it's a when the Jews were trying to destroy the infant church, Nicodemus came forward in its defense. No longer cautious and questioning, he encouraged faith of the disciples, and used his wealth in helping to sustain the church at Jerusalem and in advancing the work of the gospel. So we know who's the Nicodemus, right? He secretly went to uh, meet with Jesus. And Jesus told him then, born again, all that questions, uh, we know the story, right? <clears throat> So it is a, Jesus clearly explained, you know, sometimes it take a lot of time. For Nicodemus, it took more than three, three and a half years? Three years. Three years, three years it took. For me, when I, when, when I know it, is a, it took a, so many years to come to Christ. So it's a, each and every person, it's a, their situation and uh, uh, how we are accepting it, how much closer we walk to God. Because we came from Hindu background, it took a lot of years it's, uh, uh, to read, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, challenging. So 
But thank God, at least we are here. You know, it's, uh, for Nicodemus, it, it took the, even though it is uh, three years, but at the time when God wants it, it's a uh, uh, Eboli he came. In the paragraph, next paragraph also it says, it's uh, with Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus borne the expenses of burial of Jesus, right? And he came boldly they, uh, to their aid also. You know, even though the priests, rulers, they had a plans to destroy Jesus, but he did it because he was the council in that member, Senate and council, and uh, that plan, he was thwarted, right? That kind of things, uh, he did it. Yes, uh, purple mic. Purple mic. God of the universe, who created everything, who has so much riches at his disposal, did not have anyone to bury him. See, at that point, uh, Nicodemus and Arimathea came forward. Even though he's God, even though he has everything at his disposal, the human beings bore the burial cost. See how humbling it is for God? If God can be so humbled, who are we, right? Yeah. How much more humbler we should be? It's just a thought that came to my mind when I was reading this. Thank you. Now let's go to question number nine. Any volunteer? Yes, purple mic, please. So, how much did his faith in Jesus cost Nicodemus? How so, much it cost a lot. Cost? So yeah. He uh, lost all worldly goods, and uh, people were respecting him for his wealth and for his influence because he was. Um, a member of the Sanhedrin Council. So when he came forward in faith for Jesus, he lost all of that. He lost people, the worldly people's reverence. He lost all his goods, but he gained much more. He gained salvation and he gained so much faith in God. So compared to what he lost, what he gained was much more. It is, it's, uh, if you stand for truth, if you were coming from any other um, uh, religion, if you are coming, you may be facing so many challenges, either relatives, families, and uh, uh, so many ways, like uh, uh, at the job, so many things that may be uh, challenges. Here, it's a Nicodemus, he lost everything, but uh, still, he has a faith in Christ. You know, these are all the, uh, uh, when we read this, our faith is always encouraged, strengthened, and uh, we may come more closer to God. So this, these are all the things, uh, it is for our life, it's a given. Not only ours, it's a generation to generation. Now, let's go to question number 10. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, Green mic, please. Uh, number 10. Uh, what danger did the church in Jerusalem face as a result of the success God had given to, to them in so winning? Yes, what danger? The persecution that came upon the church in, in Jerusalem resulted in giving a great impetus, impetus to the work of the gospel. Success had attended the ministry of this world in a place 
And there was danger that the, what did I say? Disciples would linger there too long, unmindful of the Savior's commission to go to all, to all the world. Yes, thank you. Uh, in addition to that, it's a, they forget the strength to resist the evil best gained by aggressive services. They began to think they had no work so important as that of shielding the church in Jerusalem from the attacks of the enemy. Instead of educating the new converts to carry the gospel to those who had not heard it, they were in danger of taking a course that would lead all to be satisfied with what had been accomplished. So it's uh, instead of going, preaching, and bring the souls closer to them, they are within the Jerusalem. So it is the same message for us also. When we learn, when we do what we are called for, right? We are called for to go and preach the word of God. That is the gospel, right? To spread the news to share it. So that is the same thing for us too. So God permitted persecution to come upon them. So when the persecution it comes, everybody, what happened? Everybody, they scattered. Not only in Jerusalem, Judea, and other parts. So the scattered, it's a, like when they scattered, there is a kind of like a two meanings, right? It is a, when you scattered something, it may disappear. For example, like ashes or something, someone's ashes put disappear. But this scattered, it's sowing the seeds. When you sow the seeds, it's, it goes to the good soil and it come up with uh, so many fruits, right? So there is a difference in the scattering. Yes, uh, purple mic, please. Satan thought that if he persecutes the believers, that they will be scattered and they'll disappear. Yes. Like you mentioned, the um, if you if you scatter the ashes in the ocean or if you dissolve it in water, you don't see it, right? Mm -hmm. But that that was what Satan's plan was. If you persecute them, they scatter and they disappear. But that's not what happened. When they were scattered, it was like seeds put in uh, fertile soil yes. that they sprang forth and produced a lot. So that's fold. what God wanted them to do. They want, God wanted them to scatter everywhere so that his word would go through all the nations of the earth. So because because that has to happen, God permitted the persecution. Yeah. The, the reason it's, uh, you know, sometimes we have to be shaken out of our comfortable state before we do what God wants us to do, right? We, all of us, we need to do something. Because otherwise, what happens? Day after day, we do the same thing. It's not going to be like that. When you have a good news, it's kind of like a perfume. You, once you open the perfume, the fragrance is going to uh, come everywhere, right? When you learn about God's word, we can't keep it ourselves. We have to share it. No matter where, wherever you are contact, each and every day. But the moment you ask God, Lord, show me today, I want to share your word, your love, with someone else. He will open the door. He will open it. But only thing we have to ask for it. No matter whatever the way it is, even simple ways. So that will, the people will think about you. Oh, look at that person. So that kind of love, we have to pray and we have to ask God. So. So it is a glad tidings, right? So 
this Saturday we are going to we have a special program, right? It is a it's a what is it? Jesus born. It's a that is a glad tiding, right? So the shepherd they went and shared the things. It is the same thing. It is a, we have to share the good news about gospel. Among those to whom the Savior had given the commission, go ye therefore and teach all nations. That is the Matthew 28, verse 19. Where many from humble walks of life men and women who had learned to love their Lord and who had determined to follow his examples of unselfish service. To these lowly ones, as well as the disciples who had been with Savior during his, during his earthly ministry, had been given a precious trust, they were to carry to the world the glad tidings of salvation through Christ. So it's a, once you are called, you have a, like a missionary zeal and responsibilities. No matter what, what position, whether you are a holding position in any church or you may be, once you are called, no matter whatever the things it is, it is you are called to spread the gospel. Then the next paragraph, it says, they realized the responsibility of their mission. They knew that they held their hands, the bread of life for a famishing world. And they were constrained by the love of Christ to break this bread to all who were in need. See, it's a, you have the bread of life. Like before I said, you have a word of God. You cannot keep it yourself. There are so many hungry souls out there. You have to go and share with them. So through this persecution, God allowed it, but there are so many good things it came. Now, Philip, who is Philip? One of the deacon, that's right. It's a, Philip was a popular Greek name. That means harsh lover. In the New Testament, there are four persons uh, called by that name. But two Philips, two had additional name, uh, Herod, they were part of Herodian ruling family, you know, Romans, so that, that families. But uh, two Philips, the first Philip of Bethsaida was the disciple who was the instrumental in bringing Nathaniel to Jesus. Do we remember that? That was one Philip. And the second Philip, then later he brought the Greeks to Jews. The second flip was designated the evangelist based on in Acts chapter 21, verse 8. So this Philip, the first time he was appeared in Jerusalem church as a table waiter, like a serving deacons. So that is the first time he was uh, appeared over here. So he is the, he is the uh, Philip, later on, he was called as an evangelist. So there is the Philip we are talking uh, over here. He was the, one of the seven deacons, yes. And uh, because of the persecution, he went to uh, Samaria and preached Christ unto them. With that, now, now let's go to the question number 11. Any volunteer? Question number 11? Yes, Mo. Green mic, please. Yeah. 
was, was their historical background. One of the seven deacons was among those driving from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He went down to the city of Samaria. Yes. And preached Christ into them. And the people went one and called, gave him into these things, which Philip speak, spoke. Speak, yeah. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for unclean spirits came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with false and that were lame, were healed, and there was great joy in the city. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it was Samaria. Anyone knows it is a, how the Samaria uh, is a, anyone know, you, you want to share? Samaria. Either where was located, how these Jews, a little bit, because all of us, we had a Sabbath school quite a while ago. Uh, it's a Samaria, it's, it's a, they considered themselves as a descendant of Israelites, right? They left behind when Assyrian in 722 BC when they invaded the northern Israel. During that time, the Assyrians, they carried a lot of people, wealthy people, middle class, Jewish people, everybody, they carried them out. After they carried them out, only the poor people, that kind of things, so they stayed over there. When they stayed over there, then what they did is they brought, I think we read it in our, one of the, uh, LNG White book also. Then they brought a lot of people to this northern Israel. Then everybody is um, mingled and kind of like an intermarriage and everything over there. That's why the Jews, they hated the Sumerians. So now we know the story. It is um, Christ went to Samaria and he spoke to the woman, right? And uh, the uh, next paragraph, it says it's uh, Christ's message to the Samaritan woman with whom he had talked to Jacob's well had borne fruit. So before Philip event, already the seed was shown at the Samaritan, right? It's a Jesus, he stayed over there because they were anxious to hear more. They begged him to remain for two days. Imagine two days. With Savior, he may be giving them it's a lot of things about the uh, kingdom of God, right? For two days he stayed with them and many more believed because of his own word. Imagine already everybody, it's in their heart. Already this seed was planted. Now when, and when the persecution came, a lot of disciples, they went to Samaria for asylum. So when Philip and the other disciples, when they did their work, and a lot of converts, a lot of souls were saved. They came to Christ. So that is why the historical, it is that Jesus already did over there, then when the disciples went, the harvest was ready. So Philip, Work in Samaria was marked with great success. If you, if you read the Acts chapter 8, 
uh, in between over there then Philip was asking help in Jerusalem and uh, Peter and the other disciples uh, they went and helped him during that time there was a person named called it is a uh, Simon Simon Magus he is the magician sorcerer i don't know whether uh, any of you remember uh, when philip peter and everybody when they are with the holy spirit when they were healing and uh, all these things uh, when they were doing it and uh, this person he was asking peter i will give you money can you give me the holy spirit like that so if you read the uh, chap uh, act chapter 8 so it is over there so we cannot buy the holy spirit with the money this is a god's gift the more you come closer to god he will give you all the gifts so this is even though it is not in the lesson but when i was reading uh, Uh, act chapter 8 so i want to share with you now when philip was still in samaria it is he was directed by a heavenly messenger to go toward the south and to the way that go down from jerusalem jerusalem to gaza and he arose he went he did not question the call when god calls someone don't question it in the in the bible there was a another person anyone knows god called and he went hmm abraham he called right come out of your native place he didn't question he came out and he went right so it's a it's a same thing over here it's a philip god said go I have a mission work for you. So he left. He did not hesitate to obey. He just to obeyed, and uh, he wants to do the God's will. And uh, a man of Ethiopia, eunuch, of great authority under Candace, queen of Ethiopians, who had charge of all. our treasure had come to jerusalem for to worship and returning and sitting in his chariot read isaiah the prophet so he was reading the isaiah chapter 57 hold on one second yeah isaiah he was reading isaiah chapter 53 you know before god called philip but ethiopian in his heart he was a good standing man it's a the ethiopian was a man of a good standing and of a wide influence and he saw when he converted he would give others the light he had received and would exert a strong influence in favor of the gospel angels of god were attending this seeker for light you know the way it looks like god is arranging the meeting ethiopian and philip in a different location but god is reading ethiopian heart and he want to seek the truth he want to come to christ but he cannot understand it so god called philip as a mission hey i have a mission work for you so you go this route this route and you go over there you have a question so it's um, that's what he made a arrangement and he was doing that work so it's a uh, this ethiopian He was reading the chapter Isaiah chapter fifty three. It's about the sacrificial, sin bearing work of the Messiah to come. 
You know, when Philip directed to go to the Ethiopian and explain to him of the prophecy, so even imagine if it is a high official rank officer sitting in the chariot, you know, those days it is a custom to read a passage loud, a little bit loud. When Philip, he was going closer to the chariot and he was listening. When he was listening and he was reading Isaiah chapter 53, he knows, right? Because Philip is the evangelist, he knows what he is reading. So when he was reading, then Philip was asking about him. He was, do you know what you are reading it, right? Then his reply is, how can I expect someone, man, should guide me without someone explain to me? Now the question is, he is asking kind of like a Bible study. Can you come and sit and explain to me? I am not understanding it. So that is the opportunity. Some people, they have a, that uh, uh, ta talent or gifted. I was, I was going in uh, LIRR one day. The person, he said, just when the station came, Jamaica station, the person, I was thinking, I was wondering, he has that, that kind of talent. Just he came down, they don't know each other, but he simply said, good morning. Then the other person replying it, then immediately the conversation they started. It's the con So some people, they have that talent. Doesn't matter whoever you are, but they make the conversation. So we all of us, we have to pray. We need that kind of some talents we can share the gospel. So that's what it's happened. It's over here. It's uh, Philip. He went in, and uh, he was uh, uh, his, he was uh, telling about the Jesus Christ. At the end of the things, it's what happened. Once the Philip is finished, and uh, he is ready for baptism. You know, it is a. Uh, when our children or anyone, when we give the Bible studies and everything, like when they are ready for baptism, sometimes we say, oh, not now, not now. Don't postpone it. If God is calling someone, be ready and give them baptism. And we, can, we have to follow up after that too. So that kind of things, it's a, God has planned already. Because of this particular Ethiopian if you remember in, when King Solomon was uh, uh, ruling that time from the same Ethiopian, Sheba, the queen, she came uh, to Jerusalem temple to worship way before, so many uh, years before this Ethiopian. So probably she may be carried the word of God and she may be spread it, and that's why this Ethiopian person, he's, he came and he is learning about the uh, Jesus Christ. So we know the story, it is uh, after they came, he, he finished the Bible studies, he saw the water, what hinders me, you to baptize me? So he baptized over there. Then what happened after the baptism? Anyone? He disappeared. So it's the Holy Spirit. He took him away. The job, he finished it. Whatever the missionary work, whatever he called for, that job is done. But Ethiopian, it's a he. He was praising God and he went on his way. Because God knows this man, he will go to his country, he will influence so many people. So that is the, the it's the evangelist work, that is the gospel. 
If you do for one person, you spread the things. Even though he was a high position, he did not hesitate. He took it. He accepted it. Sometimes, uh, oh, I will think about it. I will, Because you have to surrender to God. When the Holy Spirit calls you, you have to humble yourself. You have to do it. Otherwise, you may be postponed, postponed. Then you never, sometimes, it will never get a chance. You know, we have to be very careful when the Holy Spirit touch our hearts. We have to come closer to him. So he, he believed in Jesus Christ and he got baptized. Then now it's a Philip. After the baptism, the Holy Spirit took him to the place where it's a, found at Asartus. It's a, one of the city of Philistines. That is the city, the, uh, the, that is the place. He went over there and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So he was preaching over there. Uh, I read a little bit uh, further. Philip had uh, four daughters, I believe. It is um, Philip had uh, four daughters and uh, they were all prophetess. So that's what his missionary uh, he did. And specifically, like I said before, it is uh, is the evangelist, Philip the evangelist. It's uh, based on Acts chapter 21, uh, eight says his title is the evangelist. Now let's go to question number 12. Any volunteer, question number 12? Yes. Can we learn from the experience of Philip? Yes. What lesson we can learn? God's faithful people had always been aggressive missionaries, consecrating their resources uh, to the honor or the name and wisely, and wisely using, using their talents in his service. The unselfish labor of Christians in the past should be to us an object lesson and an inspiration. The members of God's church are to be serious of good works, separating from worldly ambition, and walking in the full steps of him who went about doing good. With hearts filled with sympathy and compassion, they are to minister to those in need of help, bringing to sinners a knowledge of the Savior's love. Such work calls for laborious effort, but it brings a rich reward. Those who engage in it with sincerity of purpose will see souls want to the Savior for the influence that attends the practical carrying out of the divine commission is irresistible. Okay. Um, uh, okay. This is what I, I found. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's a, it's a, what we learn from this is, uh, it's, a, it's a basically, it is a, the unselfish labor of Christians in the past. We, it is an object lesson and the inspiration for us. You know, when you look at uh, all the uh, words and uh, what they did in the past, it's a, we learn a lot of things from there. Uh, when we do the good works, 
it is uh, we don't want to walk in the worldly things we have to follow the footsteps of jesus christ and uh, all this uh, uh whatever they mention in the word of god it is for our uh, correction uh, to do the to save the souls right number 13 question number 13 yes uh uh so it complete the following sentence mm-hmm. god's faithful people have always been aggressive given aggressive missionaries Oh, the mic is uh not creating their name to the honor of his name and wisely using their talents in his service. Yeah. Thank you. When God calls to do something we do willingly or we aged it. We have to do willingly. God will bless you no matter what the things it is. To honor him and glorify him that is that is our duty that is our uh, desire to do it doesn't matter whatever the things it is. We shouldn't look at anyone. We look at God and to do it. Now let's go to question number 14. Who in the church is called to work for the salvation of soul? Is there any specific person to call to do the service? Or only we can depend on only uh pastors or leaders of the church or any specific person? No. As this a uh, perfect mic please. Everyone. Everyone. All to work for the salvation of his fellow men. Everyone. Yes. Everyone. Doesn't matter. As long as you believe in Christ. Christ called you. Everyone has the work to do. See if you read the the humble consecrated believer upon whom the master of vineyard places a burden for souls used to be given encouragement by the men upon whom the lord has laid larger responsibilities those who stand as leaders in the church of god are to realize that savior's commission is given to all who believe in his name so god will send forth into his vineyard many who have not been dedicated to the ministry by the laying on hands you know it's a we shouldn't be an idol idol uh so idlers in the marketplace that kind of thing so there are lot of people that's why it is a bible it has a parable so many other uh things when we read it it is a, it's a very interesting uh to do it it's a hundreds or thousands of who heard the message of salvation even when you heard it don't be still idle idle uh, like a standing not doing any god's work do whatever it is god called called you for so that's what it says why stand here why stand he here all the day idle right and he adds go ye also into the vineyard but some people they may be not responding it but as a f- fellow believers we have to encourage them we have to bring them closer to them closer to our lord and savior long as god waited for the spirit of service to take possessions of the whole church so that every one 
shall be working for him according to his ability. Yes, uh, purple mic, please. So, um, what we learned in Nicodemus is that even though he heard God's word, even though he was convicted in his heart, he was so afraid and uh, he was hesitating to come forward and um, show his faith publicly. He waited three years. So when we do God's work, we don't have to take that in our heart saying that, oh, I did so much and the person did not uh, accept God or the person is not receptive to whatever you're doing. You don't have to think that because you don't know when the person's heart will be convicted and when the person will come forth publicly um, uh, showing to the world their faith. So that's not your thing to think about. You just have to do your work and God will take care of the rest. Yes. So that's an important thing that we have to learn that we don't have to worry about the harvest. That's God's prerogative. So he can, he can um, make the harvest come full. And our job is what we are supposed to be doing, seeing the, uh, sowing the seeds. That's right. Thank you. Yes, it's uh, Matthew 24, verse 14 says, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. You know, it is, we have to do the job because imagine, God, he wants to do it through angels. He can do it, but that is not the point. He wants men to do to the fellow men to spread the uh, gospel. Then the end will come. So I thank you for all your participation, those who are here and also those who are watching online. And thank you for joining us. Uh, I hope uh, you have got the blessing and the reading of his word. And for the next week, it is uh, chapter 12, from persecutor to disciple. So it's, uh, the chapter is going to be about Paul, Saul, from Saul to Paul, right? So it's uh, definitely, it's uh, right, it is a very, Nice topic. It's uh, with that. Anybody has any special prayer request? Yes. So. I want to pray for my brother who's gone. Yes, it's on. Uh, going for surgery uh, next when next Friday for her next. sinuses. Okay. Uh, for healing for my mom with her back and her dementia. You know, it's very hard with her dementia. Um, and a lot of people, for my coworker who's having a lot of family problems too. And I have a silent request. Okay. Thank you. Yes, my. Uh Pray for the uh, Tremendous family. Also want to pray for my family, my foster brothers Joseph and David and their families, my brother and sister Tom and their families. Okay. Also want to pray for congregation, pastor and his family, uh, Tanya's dad, and uh, want to pray for our leaders in Washington that they do the right thing. That's it. Okay, thank you. Manjula. I have two silent uh, prayer requests. Okay. Uh, yes, Nina. Uh, I want to pray for my grandparents, um, pretty much each of them for their health, and um, my family, and a silent request. Okay. Yes, uh, the comment. Um, I also would like to pray for my the hell of my Dora and Caroline's help and also for most most help. Okay. And 
One of my friends uh, in Virginia is sick with cancer and she's going to undergo chemotherapy again. She has had chemotherapy in the past and the cancer has recurred. Now they want to give her another round of chemotherapy. Her name is Lena, so please pray for her and her family. Okay. Anyone else? And those who are watching online, uh, it's if you have any uh, special prayer request, uh, it's, uh, we will pray for you. God even knows what is your request. And if you still need anything, you can email to uh, in our church website or you can uh, send one of us a text or anything. So we will pray for you and we will keep you in prayer. So with that, let us all stand. Let us have a, do our closing prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Father, it is a evangelism and a spreading your word throughout the world, Lord. Father, you have called each and every one of us, Father, Father, let your Holy Spirit guide us, direct us, and help us, and open the door wherever we communicate with the people, and give us the opportunity to share your love, your word, with the other people, Lord. Father, you have scattered us throughout this community. Some of our children going to school, some of us going to work, some of us even going to shopping or anywhere, wherever it is, Father. Let your spirit guide us to share your word with others, Lord. Father, you have, we, we, it's a, we have a special prayer request. Those who are watching online, they have their uh, prayer request. Lord, you know what is their request, Lord. Please grant that request according to your will. Father, we, we have a request over here. Sister Sue, it's a, a, then it is a Manjula's friend, Paul, and a Sister Carmen, and a Brother Mo, and a, a, it's a Nina. Father, you heard all the prayer requests, Father. Bless all this uh, prayer request according to your will. Grant them, Father, bring them closer to you, heal them, and to provide them whatever they were requesting. Father, as we are going back home, give us traveling mercy, and help us to read your word every day, come closer to you. And bless our church members, and bring us back to church over here on Sabbath. Bless us throughout the week and guide us and protect us from everything, Lord. It's especially is uh, COVID, especially is uh, it's uh, everywhere. And shield us, Father. Bless us and guide us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a safe trip.